Herman Survivor Professional Series. Quality, comfort, and durable footwear since 1879. Never heard of them until yesterday. This isn't a commercial for them. I'm just kind of sharing some information. I was out looking for some new work boots yesterday. Came across these. And uh, real quick, just uh, it says, The oldest continuing manufacturer of outdoor boots since 1879. Thought I'd give them a try. And I'll tell you real quick, this video is not going to be about these boots. I'm just uh, showing you some uh, nice features of these boots I kind of like and hoping they work out in the long run. They ran me about 100 bucks, and I uh, kind of like some of the features they have. Let me just point them out real quick. Steel toe, of course. I like this uh, rubber coating it's got on here. I'm constantly um, kind of kicking my toes against stuff to keep the uh, dirt, you know, kind of make the dirt fall out from underneath the sole. It gets trapped up in here, you know. And, uh, well, always wearing out the tip of the boot here. So I kind of like this rubber coating. Kind of like that. This has got four stitches in here. This is like what real leather, I think it says in the brochure. These are a little higher than I usually get for work boots. But I tried the lower ones and uh, didn't feel quite as comfortable. I'll tell you, the inside is really nice and uh, nice and loose as, as far as size-wise. I got pretty wide feet and these are uh, pretty comfortable. I like the padding. Um, got some nice uh, flex back here so it doesn't uh, bind up and hurt my feet when I walk. This is a pretty hard plastic. Well, not plastic, but some kind of material that, as I said, I'm constantly kicking my toes and my heels. And uh, this will help from wearing out. Skid proof, mark proof, reflective here, riveted. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Like I said, I'm not uh, promoting them or anything. I'm just kind of never heard of these boots. Been around a long time. Never heard of the company. Tried them out. Found them yesterday, actually. And that I'd give them a shot. Anyway, I'll let you know how they work out long term. So as I made my way to the register to pay for my new boots, I uh, ended up stopping to take a quick look at the uh, cell phone display case. And a nice cell phone display case where they show all the different models and the different companies and kind of entice you into upgrading or changing your plan. I hadn't really been shopping for a new phone, although mine was three years old and due for an update. One of the things I didn't like about my phone is it wouldn't let me do one of these microphones. So it was always kind of hard and rough to do kind of videos. So anyway, uh, salesman walked out to me and started talking to him and telling them, be real nice if I could find a way to save some money on my plan every month. The company I've been with, well, I've been with them since uh, cell phones came out, late 90s. And I uh, explained to them that, you know, it'd be kind of nice if you find a way to cut my monthly bill down a little bit. So, anyway, long story short, after talking with them for a little while and ended up figuring out that uh, he was going to be able to save me some money every month. Which I was kind of surprised. The company I'd been with for a long time really hadn't uh, been able to do any better for me. And I've asked them several times, and you know, it was just one of those things where I kind of get into a uh, lull, I guess, where you just kind of go along with whatever they're dishing out and you you deal with it. But I wasn't really looking to change companies or anything, but I was willing to for the right price. So that's what ended up happening, and in the course I ended up with a new phone, which I'm doing recording with, because one of the features I like about it is I can do a remote microphone now. So hopefully the volume control on my videos will be a little better going forward. But anyway, this video isn't about new cell phones and new plans either. This video is more about uh, saving money, being prepared. And... Well, there's one thing that we try to do around here is plan ahead and kind of pinch our pennies and make sure that we're spending money wisely. 
a lot of our videos in the past have been about the projects we're doing and one of the things that Brenda really works hard at and has been working hard at is planning ahead with the garden and canning. She learned how to can last year. She learned how to dehydrate food and uh, long-term storage. She's out, uh, as you see from uh, a lot of our videos, um, looking for deals and looking for things that, uh, you know, kind of help us prepare for whatever might be coming down the road. We don't know. We're not really... Uh, I guess you'd say people that are looking for doomsday or anything like that but you know you got to be prepared and given what's going on in the world today with gas prices and food prices and shortages speaking of fuel, fuel prices I'm sure everybody's in that same boat where in the last couple of years now we've seen fuel prices going through the roof and I say through the roof I mean when I bought this pickup a couple of years ago I was buying gas for under two dollars a gallon here in southern Maine. This past summer gas went up to well, pretty close to five dollars a gallon. Now the gas is one thing but diesel for the tractor that's another thing. Diesel for the tractor went up I think close to six dollars a gallon. It's pretty expensive. Now I don't run the tractor a lot although I've got about 360 hours on it in the last couple of years. I uh, obviously do go through some fuel so we've been watching the fuel prices and trying to plan ahead and kind of trying to predict you know when the market was gonna bottom out so to speak and through all this past summer prices were coming down a little bit I'm not gonna get into all the political details of why and how and what's going on in the world and whatnot but we were trying to plan our purchase to buy some fuel to stock up to get us through hopefully not a shortage but probably a price increase for sure so this past week I was really watching the prices closely watching the news just paying attention to what's going on in the world and I noted that uh, I think OPEC just had a meeting this week that said they were going to cut production by two million barrels I think that's right so it's one of those things where it looked like gas prices had probably bottomed out. Now around here bottomed out, I think the uh, price for regular fuel had gone down to at our local station around 314, 315 a gallon. And diesel was uh, somewhere around 4, low 4, 425, 450, somewhere in that range. Um, I thought, well, now's a good time. We've been preparing for doing a little stock up on our fuel and diesel uh, we went out sometime this spring and purchased some of these jugs right here I kind of like these they don't uh, have to, I don't have to deal with all the you know stuff that you have on I guess you'd say the regular fuel tanks where you've got all kinds of little levers you got to pull and push and you end up spilling more fuel than you end up sometimes getting in the tank it makes a mess it's environmentally not friendly now this particular tank I actually got from a buddy of mine as a gift, I think for Christmas. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with it. It uh, actually works pretty well, pretty simple. Simple one little, one little lever to push here and you open it up and gas flows out. Works pretty well, kinda like it. But I really like these. These are all purpose fuel jug. I picked up a four pack right here of these. I knew going ahead that I was going to need some more fuel storage, putting them to use now. The other thing we purchased this summer in preparation for buying some fuel was a diesel tank. And this is made to go in the back of a pickup truck. It's a 36 gallon vertical transfer tank. It's not made for gas, but it is made for diesel. I got a good deal on this. It was a third of the price of a new one. Like I said, I've been watching the fuel prices over the last, pretty closely over the last week, kind of tracking them. And I noticed between the news, what they were saying on the news as far as prices going up, production being cut back, that now is going to be the time to pull the trigger on stocking up on fuel. So, that's what we did yesterday. Now, I got 36 gallons. I actually think I filled it with uh, closer to 38 once it was full. We were able to 
purchase the off-road diesel. Now the off-road diesel is a dye in it that uh, you're not supposed to use on the road because the off-road diesel doesn't have road tax or taxes that they usually apply to diesel or gas that uh, would go towards uh, your road tax. I was able to find fuel at my local fuel uh, gas station here, not too far from me. Uh, Off-road diesel was $3.99 a gallon. So I was pretty happy to find that. I ended up filling that tank, which I said, uh, like I said, I think I got 30, it's made 36, but if I'm not mistaken, I may have got closer to 38 gallons in there. 10 gallons in these jugs with the 38 gives me 48. So that's going to get me pretty far with the tractor. I don't use a lot of fuel with the tractor. It sips fuel. It really doesn't go through a lot of fuel. I get a lot of hours on a tank. So be, with these 48 gallons, I think we're going to be set for quite a while. And we got it at a really, I'd say really good price, but considering what the prices have been and what they came down to, $3.99 a gallon, pretty happy with that purchase. But all in all, um, I think we're going to have some fuel to be, uh, to last us a while anyway, so. But this video isn't about fuel tanks and fuel prices. It's not about new boots, new cell phones, or new wood stoves. This video is about being prepared, seeing if you're paying attention to what's going on around you in the world, not buying into what they might be feeding you on the news every day, thinking for yourself, trying to get your sources of information from different places, making sure that you're ready can handle whatever might be coming your way. You see, it's about whatever you think you might be ready for and whatever you think you might need to be prepared for. It's going to be different for everybody. But at the end of the day, you're all responsible for yourself. So, ask yourself, are you ready? Now, I'm not trying to be all gloom and doom about this. Certainly, uh, we see things that are coming maybe that we haven't seen before in our lifetime, but best we can do is try and be prepared, try to be ready. As for Brenda and I, being prepared, being ready, putting in a little extra effort to make sure we had a little more garden space this spring. Maybe having a little extra food stored up in our pantry this year. Having a secondary source of heat with our fireplace with our new wood stove. ready? Are we prepared? I don't know. We've got a long winter ahead of us. Time will tell.
Well, that's a question we ask ourselves every day. Are we ready? Are we prepared for another long, cold New England winter? As the leaves turn, and as the days get colder and shorter, all we can do is hope we're prepared. Anyway, enough of my rambling about being ready and being prepared. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe. We appreciate all our subscribers. And ask yourself, you ready?